Welcome back, welcome back. This is still why in the morning, and I'm glad that you've stayed with us. If you're just joining in, you're still on time. You missed a little bit of our conversation in the morning with the team that is Valentine and uh, our brand Sakwa, but uh, they'll be coming in in not too long. But for now, we are on health, and today we want to talk about curbing alcohol and drug abuse especially among the youth because it's been rampant over the past few years and for that we are joined by one mr calvin odongo uh who's a founder and uh his founder and general coordinator of precious cornerstone that's a youth Advantage. empowerment program a youth, a youth community, community based organization organization sorry yeah. uh karim Musaina. Uh, we're glad to have you with us Thank you so much. Amazing. So you want to tell us a little bit about what you do before we get into our topic, alcohol and drug abuse, uh, because I know you wor you work with the youth a lot. So yeah. we're just a little bit into that. Uh, Calvin has been in the field for from 2011, when uh, I remember when the post-election violence that uh, came out in uh, 2007, mm -hmm. uh, it was a challenge for us because for me, I was in mm. Kibera by that time. And uh, I remember we lost two of our friends, which were schoolmates, classmates. In fact, we, where we, I was. And uh, one of the, one of the students also was shot dead. It was shot by a gun through the stomach. And then uh, from my, something just came to my mind. And I said, what then can we do to bring the youth together? Because my focus was, uh, Luos were like, we are Luos, Kambas were like, we are Kambas, and uh, Kikuyus were like, we, especially the area where I am in Line Saba. It is a place where it's known for, it has the border for Kikuyu, it has the border for Luos, it has the border for Luya. That is from Lindi, Mashimoni, uh, Line Saba. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason why I brought, uh, the, my mind was, how can we, like, how can I create something? or kind of a group which can bring all these tribes together. That is why the PC band, that's where I started, it had all the tribes around that place. I made sure we had all the tribes together so that we could do things together. So that when such a time comes, we mm -hmm. cannot be able to go against the other person or against the other tribe because already we are working together and there is something which you are doing together. So that is when uh, how I started with the PC band. And uh, it was registered with the community youth-based organization. And um, I've been doing several things apart from maybe after the foundation or the, regist the registration. Uh, the focus was I've been ide identifying talent within the slums because I believe uh, the, one of the challenge within the slums is uh, people have talents, people yeah. have uh, potential, potential, but now people mm -hmm. to mentor them, people to encourage them. Someone can be singing very well in the slums, but now when it comes to maybe I need money to record some this song or I need money to take me outside there, that is where the challenge is. The challenge is. So my, one of my target was, uh, has been identifying the talents. How can we be able to, how can I be able to source for the support from the friends I have? And then PC Band is not sponsored. It doesn't have any organization which is sponsoring. We, I do it solely and also from the friends okay. which we have. We have some uh, some uh, spiritual leaders that is from other churches, pastors, which I can uh, call together, and then we discuss: Can we help this brother, or can we help these youths? That is what I normally do. Wow, yeah. amazing! So it has come from a, it came from a place of uh, you saw your friends being killed during the post-election violence, and you decided that you need to change something about it, bring the youths together. Yeah, in fact, my yeah. main focus, the reason, in, what came in my heart, the reason why I started, I started this band, mm -hmm. was to bring the people who were affected by that. And because I remember in 2007, mm -hmm. I remember Kalonzo, Kalonzo saying, I'm going to support mm -hmm. Kibaki. And that is why they, immediately there was a, a, Kamba, a Kamba friend who was, selling, who was selling to us from the shop. And the people just came from nowhere and they shot this, this young man dead and was a student. Oh, so no. because Kalonzo decided to support mm. Kibaki. That is how it came. So, and uh, if you can remember, if you can recall, very many people were killed, yeah. especially in Line Saba, either from uh, the, the group of this other, we, we don't want to recall them, but uh, those are the challenges. So, my mind was, how can we bring it, these people together? 
And that is why I made sure I want mm. my team to be represented by all tribes around this place. So that oh. when everything, if there is anything maybe to fight about, then we don't have any need to fight about because we are all represented in this group. Mm -hmm. We are that working is, uh, as a team, yeah. not tri on, on the basis yeah. of tribes. All right, amazing. So um, now bringing it to alcohol and drug abuse, you have also had projects uh, in, you, you mentioned, uh, off camera but now tell us about the projects that you've had around um, creating an awareness to the youths on alcohol and drug abuse the challenges people are for now especially very many youth are uh, jobless mm -hmm. and then again people are disparate outside there and especially the, the, as we call them youth these youth also have a family some are parents, some are, as you mm. call them, youth, because sometimes we forget, we think like they're just youth, they are single or something like that. Yeah. Some of them, they are parents, they, some of them, young women, they have children, yeah. and those are the challenges they're passing through. So, so most of them, they, have, they don't have jobs, and if they have jobs, there are these small jobs which cannot, maybe someone can even be cooking chapati on the road and then being mm -hmm. paid 100 per day or 150 just to sustain the family for the... So my focus has been how should I, because now the many youth, especially now, I don't know if the government is for concerned about that, very many youth have been involved in drug and alcohol. Yeah. So because of the idleness, because of maybe someone is willing to go out there to work, but this person doesn't have a place to go and work. Mm -hmm. This person has walked all over looking for a job. But he has never, yo, so mm -hmm. this person is just looking for, if you can give me 10, 20 shillings, you can give me 10 bob, the, the only option where to go is to go and get those kind of brew or those kind of drugs yeah. which can be able to relieve them from stress. That mm -hmm. is what they, what, that is what normally happens. So I came to realize, I just decided to come in so that I, if I'm not in a, a hurry. Maybe I can be able to say through my effort I've been able to change maybe 100 people have been able to transform because even from my band, the people we have, some of them have been transformed from alcohol and drug abuse oh. because that is how I started. My intention was how can I be able to share my knowledge to this person and then as this person transforms, can I be able to give them because I don't know why many people, if you talk to them or if I bring a band somewhere, mm -hmm. you will find many youth, they just want to sing they will say i'm interested to play something in the music i'm interested to say interested to sing i'm interested to play keyboard can you be able to teach me how to play guitar mm -hmm. that is so that kind of connection is helping us to transform as much as we talk to them the, the ways of uh, the withdrawal mm -hmm. the withdrawal or maybe how they can be able to come out from the drugs but we must also be able to commit them somewhere we must also be able to engage them in a place where they can we be able to see you every day can you be able to do something together with us every day yeah so even if it is to there is a time i was uh, in uh, during covid 19 mm -hmm. i've worked with the ministry of health and i was able to give donations to very many youth including blankets including foodstuffs uh, those kind of things so i was able to these are the people i was identifying and then giving support to them because of their situation and as we also give them the for information and knowledge on how to come out of the situation oh. so those are the commitments we have been giving and again it is a, it is a challenge because again for the slums you must be very creative on how to engage them some of them they can be very rough if they think uh, if they you know don't know how to engage them so it is another so you must have a smart way of engaging them and also giving the information but again mm -hmm. if you check on what the government is doing there are very many organizations or very many personnel which are working out there uh -huh. uh, giving them reaching people about you alcohol and drug abuse they are very old people so you sometimes you might find maybe the message is not reaching home very well. So there's a disconnect because you are an old person. Why are you telling me about the youth? You don't understand. Yeah, I've, we... many times I've seen, <laughs> I've heard, I'm heard, I've heard them saying, uh, like you have lived your life, life until to yeah. So what do you want to tell us? We are now. <laughs> <laughs> so that those are the challenges but which I think the government should find a way of how can you be able to utilize the potential of these youth who are coming out to help on the effort on of fight against alcohol and drug abuse mm -hmm. so that empower them because that yeah. is the knowledge they have the knowledge if I share to a brother maybe you take me to your brother and I just 
give the information that, oh, brother, this thing, we can be able, I, maybe I can even say I was there. And by the God's grace, I've been able to come out. So you can also be able to come follow out. on what I'm doing so that we can be able to live a better life. This message will be well received by this young man than somebody of your, the age of your grandfather <laughs> or the age of your father talking to a younger, a 19-year-old. Mm -hmm. So they automatically they will judge. They will say maybe this person has reached the point of uh, maybe now, <laughs> not my age. Okay, yeah. so that is a part of the solution. The government, to, when creating awareness, to look for a youth for uh, people so yeah. that they can go out and talk to the youth that are engaging yeah. in drug and alcohol abuse. So what would you say is that how big, what is the statistics? How does it look like, especially in the slums? Because those are the areas you are in. You said mostly in Kibra, um, you mentioned uh, Kawangware yeah. and uh, Langata. So yeah. maybe before you answer that, you've said Langata. I'm looking at Langata. Is it, where exactly in Langata? Because it's, uh, I wouldn't place it the, the same level with Kibra or with Kawangware because yeah. it's a bit, maybe middle class. Are they uh, also going through the same thing on matters of drug and alcohol abuse, uh, the same as for someone in Kibra? Langata, okay, you know some people, I think the mind is most, uh, almost a half or a quarter, three quarters of uh, Langata is maybe is developed. It's uh, maybe those kind of higher class, but uh, Langata also has a class, a slum. Okay. Within. So there is a slum within, especially the side of if you are coming through Olympic. Oh. And then uh, down there to mm. the, this part of uh, Iris again, the other side to Tiende coming the upward there, there. There is a slum also down there we called the Raila Education or the Raila Migingo. Migingo, there is a slum down there. Uh -huh. So there are some places there. Uh, there is even another slum at Soweto where the development uh, the house uh, uh, development of housing is uh, being done so which is part of kibera and part of langata this it is just a border area, especially mm -hmm. even the part of lindi lindi is also part of Lang langata okay so these people these places they share the same character they share the same uh, challenges in terms of uh, the abuse of alcohol and drug abuse Mm -hmm. the, the, it is for us, our, my effort or our engagement is not about those, uh, we cannot go to estates, maybe to talk about the, unless those, their children come to the slums where we can be able to, because we know they, we have the identified places where we can be able to get these people. Okay. So once we have that zoning or maybe where they play games or maybe because for them it is open. If it is to smoke bang, you will just find them smoking. They don't run away. They, they don't, don't hide. <laughs> yeah, you will just go there and you find them smoking. So it is not uh, something maybe you will uh -huh. try to, you will guess, like, you will tell someone maybe, are you smoking or maybe are you, you not will smoking? Just see it. Yeah, you will just find them. So, okay. the, yeah. so how, how bad, clearly, from what you're saying, it's, it's that bad. So statistic wise, how would you place it? The level at which uh, the youths are indulging in drug and alcohol abuse in slums? The rate is, for now, I think the rate is high, though I cannot be able to be specific on statistic uh -huh. because that is a research which is made by maybe some organization. Yeah. But for me, from the look of, uh, uh, just from what I can be able to see, I think the rate is now very high. But, and again, it depends because of the economy or because of the situation. So of, it has, you're saying it's, it's reason because of the status of the yeah. economic challenges yeah, in Yeah, economic Kenya. challenges. And mm -hmm. then again now, very many people, you know there are some people who are working be to before COVID. Before yeah. COVID, that is 2020. Uh -huh. And uh, then uh, after COVID or maybe the, during that 2020, 2021, mm -hmm. many people lost jobs. Mm -hmm. That is why if you go to the slums or maybe you go to Kibera, Dagoreti and uh, Langata, you find, especially from the slums, you find people are very many even right now, if you go in the morning. Yeah. You find them hanging out there because, and even if you talk to them, you, they will be, they are all specific. They will tell you they have been walking around, well, maybe where they were working, they were, Laid off. yeah, they were, the job was ended. So mm. maybe they were, they were terminated or maybe because, because of the rationing of the staff. So that is why you can, it is a, an excuse which you cannot even blame them when they are raising their concern. Yeah. So that is the Okay. Issue. 
And f for most of them, uh, we know that the economic challenge is one of the triggers. Uh, what other triggers them? What uh, what other thing triggers them into drug and alcohol abuse? Yeah. The other triggers. Yes, apart from now economic challenges, they can't yeah. afford, they don't have jobs. What other things trigger youths into drug and alcohol abuse? Other, uh, what uh, I can also say, mm -hmm. as much as maybe we say some are looking for a job or maybe have been working and uh, they have been laid off, uh, there are also youth who have just decided to live their life. Right. So they have decided. Someone, maybe you can even tell someone, can you be able to join the organization? We do one, two, three. And then mm -hmm. they can even tell you, I don't. Don't want. To. Yeah, I don't want. I'm, I'm just, I just want to be myself. I just want to. So there are some people who are purposed. Who have just, maybe some are even not even about the situation of the economy or maybe the lack of jobs or maybe the situation. But they are purposed to live the life they want. Okay. So that is why we engage them. Our approach is a kind of a spiritual approach mm -hmm. and then also a kind of a maybe support, maybe empowerment through how we identify the talent. We can empower through the talent. We can also empower mm -hmm. through maybe small gift from what we have. And also again, we can also engage on the spiritual aspect because everything, all these, these are devices. And the devices from the community means mm -hmm. you must engage people through the through God's precepts. Precept. So what I'm saying is that mm -hmm. our counseling or our our contribution or our transformation message also must be able to align with what does God say? Mm -hmm. What is the will of God? Yeah. We, are we living the life which God wants us to live? Because uh, again, we, we avoid we avoid that much because again we are we are also meeting Muslims, we are also meeting Christians. But the what the message should be, let us try to do that. Because living holistic life and living uh, uh, an acceptable life, it means you must have some part of your your life, which you are related, you must relate your life to God, to yeah. what God is saying. Okay, amazing. Yeah. So, and how has that worked out? Has it helped in? Uh, doing rehabilitation now, getting them off uh, alcohol and drug abuse because I know it's it's not easy to get to get them out of it and it's not even easy to get their families to take them to rehab because now we're talking about people in slums and they can't afford uh, basic meals. So how will they yeah. afford rehab? So how are you exactly doing that? Rehabilitation is a challenge and. Uh, I think even the government is having the challenge of, I don't know if maybe everybody, everyone is sponsored for the rehabilitation, maybe those government civil servants, maybe mm. some of them can be taken for the same. But uh, I know even of a doctor from Line Saba, so, uh, there is a man who was a doctor and uh, now has been so much affected with the uh, bang, cannot oh. even uh, do the work and uh, can talk anything because now the mind, the head is not there, the brain is not uh, maybe in, and he was a very good doctor. So, so it's not, what we're saying is that it's not even biased to those that are learned. It's affecting everyone. It cuts across those that have gone to school and those that have not gotten yeah, education. Yeah, there are those who are working, even they have money, but they have decided to use the drugs. drugs. So some have been affected mm. in the process of the use. So those are the challenges. And uh, that is why I don't know, uh, even identifying these people for rehabilitation, it means it needs a lot of effort and it needs a lot of resources. For example, for us young youth, mm -hmm. uh, for example, we, some of us, we are youth, we have the organization, but we don't have the resources to be able to, there are even some people who come to the organization, maybe for, to my organization and they want to, they think like we have money, we can do everything. <laughs> and uh, can you be able to give us this or maybe some even during Christmas they come even for food we don't have oh. food for the Christmas what can we be able to do so those are the challenges especially all the organizations which are managed by youth <laughs> the challenge is the money uh, finances and then again resources what are the how can we be able to mobilize ourselves to support on a certain need because all these needs there is a point. Uh, there is a point at which you must be able to require some amount to assist on the same. Mm -hmm. So those are the challenges. So when you talk about rehabilitation, rehabilitation it has a, it it is a wide, 
it has the trained personnel to be able to help you on the withdrawal. So for us, those who have been addicted and uh, at the point of no return, it is hard for us. You cannot because even for us they, to may manage the mind of uh, talking to them. How do you manage? For example, somebody has used a, a bang to the extent you can, this person cannot even reason with you. So for you and you want to bring your effort together to be able to rehabilitate mm -hmm. this person or maybe to help this person come out. Is there we at which point will you be able to? talk now with this person you tell him <laughs> <laughs> now you can be able to do one two three or my it is sad level. yeah so okay. it, it 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 again turned back to the government and uh, i don't know maybe you people you can be able to <laughs> how i wish but the government they're listening so how would you exactly want to partner how do you want the government to come in because now you've seen how things are on the ground what exactly should the government do if you're giving an advice to the government? And have you ever tried to work with the government? Uh, you've mentioned that you worked with the Ministry of Health some, at some point uh, in time. I, I worked as a, in partnership with the Ministry of Health during COVID-19. Okay, oh, that was during COVID-19 to yeah, spread the, the message. Yeah, that was during COVID-19. And on drug and alcohol abuse, uh, there's no partnership on that drug is there. And, uh, on uh, alcohol and drug abuse, uh, through the... May the, through the office of the state function, secretary state function, mm -hmm. uh, I was engaged to NACADA. Okay. Uh, where I met the CEO, Mr. Victor. Mm -hmm. uh, but with my uh, my expectation that I was supposed to get uh, the effort, maybe the partnership, or maybe can be empowerment to be able to you reach youths which are affected with alcohol and drug abuse, especially once when they recognize the song which I recorded about alcohol and drug abuse. Okay. So, but after that meeting, uh, nothing else, nothing was never done again. So, so we just talked, and then after that, it ended that way. So even uh, there is a time I tried to communicate with the communication. Uh, PR, PR, uh, the manager in charge of PR, mm -hmm. and uh, I think uh, the information, the message he gave me was uh, that uh, for the engagement uh, with the community, that was not the, it was not given that or maybe or assurance, maybe I can be able to engage on the same. Okay. Because my effort was how can we be able to work together with Nakada to be able to reach the slums, especially my target is these people, vulnerable people down there. Yeah. Because I believe there is a time matter even during COVID, I was working with a team from uh, Ministry of Health, and some even were afraid of girl going deeper to the slum. <laughs> so that is why I want to reach those people, maybe those who are uh, unreached, that, that so that we can be able to help, because that is where people <laughs> suffer most. Yeah. And uh, it is, I think, uh, it is because of ignorance, because of lack of knowledge, because of lack of information, people can be able to encourage them out. Okay. So what the government should do is, uh, can we, uh, I don't, I, what we should, what the government should do is to encourage those people who are willing to s help in the fight against alcohol and drug abuse. Mm -hmm. Because again, we have the organizations which are out there, which are very well set, very well, for example, in my case, I've been, my organization has been mobile. Uh -huh. or uh, we we can decide like tomorrow saturday we are going to work from somewhere because we don't have uh, i've been hosted uh, the my engagement with the minister of health 2020 2020 mm -hmm. was to the agreement was to bring us together to help us get a place where we can be able to call a center when uh -huh. we were doing creating awareness yeah. i did awareness i create I, 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 with our youth we were i i brought uh, like six youth mm -hmm. who were creating awareness and moving that is working in partner we together with the nms nairobi metropolitan services health promotion officers working with the ministry of health and also with other organization about the fight against covid19 mm -hmm. so when we did, we, we, what, I will, for example, what I can be able to say, because the same thing happened in the Ministry of Health. Mm -hmm. We did all, the, all that, what we only received from the Ministry of Health was the fuel for the car for almost more than one year. Our vehicle be being fueled with by the Ministry of Health at a designated place, okay. petrol station. 
So uh -huh. that is where we used to, we are told, your vehicle will be fueled somewhere. So whatever we could come on the way, maybe we are supposed to, these people have been working. They, they did their job more than uh, one year, mm -hmm. working with the Ministry of Health, working with the Nairobi Metropolitan, moving all over the sub-counties within Nairobi County. Okay, that was a good thing. But now the challenge is, because it is being done by youth, no one has been there. When it comes to now, you hear some stories, you think like maybe even some of those who knew that we are working with the Ministry of Health or maybe with the NMS, maybe they thought like maybe we are part and parcel of or maybe things which are the part of the payment or something like that. Okay. But uh, I think there are some challenges which maybe at in the fullness of time, we can, we, the time will come, maybe we can even be able to share with the deputy president or maybe we can even give the information to the president mm -hmm. because we know the challenges we passed through. And I think uh, to my understanding, it is maybe it's, uh, this organization run by youth, especially again, there is a kind of judgmental, if this organization come from where? So where you come from, automatically judge, you are not supposed to benefit from okay, certain things. That is, I think that is the context. So they don't have trust because now for, with the organization you established from Kibra. Yeah. So there's some trust issues. They don't really So like being established you. from Kibra, uh -huh. it means these people, they don't need money. They don't need to be paid. They don't need, uh, why should we pay them this they amount? They can just do their services. Yeah, I can remember it was uh, even the, the song I recorded for the COVID-19. Mm -hmm. uh, was a well-received song, was recognized. Even the Minister of Health uploaded the song. Madam Pierce herself uploaded the song to the website of the Ministry of Health. And uh, after the song was uploaded, I was the, 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 person, the person who was in charge of special program, mm -hmm. that is Dr. Kefa. I think Dr. Kefa initiated, called us for a meeting and uh, the song was supposed to be paid on a jingle price. Okay. As a jingle. So when, once that was, uh, after the meeting, everything disappeared like nothing And uh, what we were, still, we were told is, can you be able to go outside there? We want to work as a team. We want to, and then we could get the program every day for the places we are supposed to do the uh, mass testing, we are supposed to do the mobilization for it. There is a one even for the vaccination of the children, of children under five years. Okay. And we are supposed to even to do the, what, vaccination. So those mm -hmm. are the things. But uh, now we are here for alcohol and drug abuse. So well, maybe the time will come for so that. So now the, basically what we're saying is that the government needs to be serious with organizations that are, that are honestly in support of things that are benefiting the community, community like what your organization is doing, and f give funds in a, as much as, you know, in accordance to how they would have given to any other organization that is not in the uh, established in slums, yes? Yeah, I think, but okay. again, mm -hmm. because I, be, I believe, or maybe I, my perception, mm -hmm. there might be some people benefiting on the same effort which you are giving. Because for me, I believe in the government, especially where the government where, where we are now, mm -hmm. I think they can be very happy when you, they get people who are energetic, people who are focused, people who are fighting on the direction which the government is looking for. Okay. So I think the government, this government, I think, can be able to support youth very well. But uh, uh, there's people who have been, maybe, I think they benefit from other efforts or maybe they benefit just from uh, the back door, but what is done on this other side is different. Yeah, so that is enough. what I think. And I think that is the so, reason why youths are suffering more. Even during COVID-19, uh, we were very many youth organizations. I remember even uh, attending the brief, uh, the brief, what? The brief uh, media briefing at uh, mm -hmm. Afi House. And uh, the challenges are, we were left there. So those who are willing to go, that is why I sustained in the same effort for more than one year. And uh, the group which uh, appreciated my effort is the UN Habitat. UN Habitat is the organization which gave me an award for the effort which I gave, wow. I put in the career. Okay. So we need more support, transparency and less corruption in government supporting these organizations that are helping the community. So before we get, uh, before we finish the show, I want us to play the song that uh, you did for drug, alcohol and drug abuse. Yeah. All right, so we're going to play that so that you get the message, if you're a youth, get the message from it and then we come back again.
Alright, that is a song uh, by Calvin Odongo, Alcohol and Drug Abuse. I hope you've gotten the message. I love it, how informative it is. Yani, and I'm just scrolling through the messages. People are saying this is what the generation needs, very informative, free education to our youths. Mm -hmm. You know, it's such a good song. And you sang that from a point of from for from a point of love I'm imagining to get the youths to stop using these drugs, telling mm -hmm. them kuna tibi inafika tibi kuna acute um acute kidney failure, mm -hmm. there's this and that for mm -hmm. them to stop. Uh, yeah. taking drug and alcohol abuse. Yeah. Wow, amazing. And you said you received a recognition by Nakada for this song? Yeah. Ah, amazing. As we come to a close, uh, what do you want the youth to know? Kuna Monye Ako in drug and alcohol abuse currently. And then there's someone who's thinking to go into alcohol because things are not easy at this mm. point in their life. I want a person, I want a job, and it's, mm. it's really hard. There's pressure from their friends, from the society. Mm. What do you want to tell them? This is your camera. What I want to tell my fellow youths is uh, mm. there is time for everything. And uh, challenges can be there. All of us, I don't know if you can be here if you have not passed through challenges. There is a point where we felt like we could not continue, but uh, God made us out because of the decision we made. So what I want to say is that uh, the uh, people sin because sin is very sweet. Sin is very luring. Sin is very sweet, uh, beautiful in the eyes, to the eyes. So what I can say is that uh, just purpose, have a good desire, have a good will for your life. Because we only live this life, we don't have any other life to live. So what I want to say is that let us avoid the use of alcohol and drug abuse. People, I've seen people who have been working and they have been, uh, the jobs ended because they could not work anymore. Not that they have been fired, but they just fired themselves because of the challenges they faced, they faced with their bodies. The body could not continue anymore, maybe they, somebody just went off. So what I'm saying is that let us avoid the challenge. If you have the organization, the groupings which you can be able to engage with together, don't be lonely, don't be alone. Look for people who can be able to talk with you, talk with you. and especially people who can encourage you in a better, in a good way. There are some people, companies, which, are, which, which will always direct you to the destruction. But I'm um, talking to the youth who can be able to identify all of us, even either if you don't go to church, you don't go to mosque, but uh, there is a point, there is someone who can talk to you, there is someone, someone you can admire. Use this organization. If you are, you are in uh, maybe Kibera and you want to approach PC Band, just come to the organization. You, can, you will find people who can be able to talk to you about the real issue life challenges or maybe the things we, we pass through life. So what I want to say is that let us avoid mm -hmm. alcohol and drug abuse. These are just, it is uh, just for a moment, but uh, in the near, near future, you can be, we, there are challenges. And especially if you get what I, I placed in that song, is that the challenges, the cancers you see uh, from the research or maybe the information we have is that some are generated, some are incubated, some are brought up by the, uh, the use of alcohol and drug abuse. So let us avoid because... Uh, tomorrow you'll be sick. Some of us we get maybe in that kind of illness which, which we can not be able to come out. We don't have the resources. We don't have the money even to take us to hospitals. So why should we do the, this kind of things which will make, end our life very, uh, very soon? So what I can say is that let us avoid alcohol, let us avoid drugs, and mm -hmm. uh, we'll live a better life. Okay. Well, the most important thing, don't be alone. Just find people who can be able to talk with you, to find organization, find groupings, find those youths. You have uh, your age mate. Some are living a better life. Just to find a way where you can be able to interact with them mm -hmm. and uh, will not be... That is where you will get a testimony that you are not alone in what you are facing through. The, some are also facing the same, but they have decided to live a life which is worthy. Wow, amazing. Where can people get you if they want to reach a PC band? PC Band, uh, there is P PC Band, uh, I have uh, an handle, a Twitter handle, uh, that is PC Band Kenya. Uh, we are on Facebook, PC Band Kenya, and we are on YouTube, PC Band Kenya. Okay. So yep. once you Google or maybe you search PC Band Kenya, you will fi find PC Band. Okay. I thank can you. be able to get your information.
All right, amazing. Thank you very much, Calvin, for coming on board and sharing us with us such amazing insights. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much, and uh, God bless you, all of you. Amen. Amen, Amen to that. Amen. That has been Calvin uh, Odongo, who is a fa musician, also the founder of PC Band Kenya, a youth uh, community organization there to help the youth in facing different challenges, especially in the slum areas. Well, this has been Entrepreneurship Tuesday, still on Matters Health, but more on entrepreneurship is coming next. Brand Circle will be having a very interesting conversation, so you want to stick here. We take a short break and then we'll be right back. <laughs>